see that up there? I gotta make that into some furniture, or I'll get kicked out of the house. You know how it is. It's a truckload of old rough sawn walnut. I got it from a guy I bought a bunch of tools and other dismembered organic materials from. Oh, that's hot. With any luck, we'll get some half-decent boards out of this lot. This walnut apparently came all the way from Wisconsin, which is far away from where I'm from. It's at least 20 years old, with the exception of a few boards. And it's drier than the Sahara on a Sunday. Looks like we got a pretty good pile of usable stock here. In this state, the boards are really just a rough approximation of their final dimensions. Now that we know we have enough walnut for most of this project, we can really dial these in. This next pass will get us to within 1 16th of an inch of final dimensions. Since I took in a bunch of stray wood from off the street, I don't exactly get pick of the litter here. What I traded in cost, I lost in quality, so some compromises must be made in the arrangement process, which is really about hiding less than desirable surfaces, like these blonde sapwood streaks and knots. Grain orientation is also taken into consideration. No judgment, of course. This gets marked up so all the grain is facing the same direction as much as possible. There's a saying in fine woodworking, the magazine, and maybe the practice. You can do anything with hand tools that you can do with power tools, but you can't do everything with power tools that you can do with hand tools. If you want a good looking furniture piece that will withstand the fall of time, you really got to bring in the hand tools at some point. That 1 16th of an inch we left on everything earlier was a bit of an insurance policy for power tools that may be a little out of whack. Biscuits are one of those superfoods, like raw almonds and uranium cakes. And what better way to serve up biscuits than with a generous helping of Woodland Farms homemade white chocolate syrup butter. I just can't get enough of this stuff, and neither can the tabletops. The panels get clamped up in panel clamps. Hence the name. I think. These clamps make sure slippery white chocolate syrup butter covered wood doesn't slide around all over the place. I got this in my Easter basket last year. Alright, enough screwing around. It's time to get serious about the future and join these parts into rigid, tightly arranged wooden matrimony. Or, as we woodworkers like to call it, joinery. The first thing we're going to tackle are the legs and side stretchers. I'm 
I'm more of a tenants first kind of a guy. But that's just me. There are plenty of people out there that run in, guns a blazing, chopping out mortises first. I just don't agree with the lifestyle. After the tendon shoulders are cut, they get cleaned up with a shoulder plane. Hence the name. I think. Look at that, it does cheeks too. Now before moving on, it's always a good idea to get a thumbs up from our little buddy here, the double square. Arbiter of truth on all matters regarding small 90 degree angles. Eh, a little rocky. Still rocky. Nope. Eh, good enough. Moving on to the rails that basically connect together the things we just made. The bottom rails need a little lip to support a convenient lower shelf, if I do say so myself. This operation merits a visit from one of my favorites, the Stanley 45 Combination Plane. Assuming the form of a rabbit plane, of course, or just about any other weird joinery plane you want. The grain really does need to be dead straight in order for the 45 to do its job right. Given my limited, questionable lumber selection, one can expect a few bad eggs. Am I allowed to say that? Let's just play it safe and take it on over to the table saw. When it's all put together, these rails are going to stick right out of the legs. Don't worry, it'll look good. It does mean long tenon cheeks with narrow shoulders, though. Eventually, we'll dig some holes and drive wedges through the protrusions. Each carcass assembly is inspected thoroughly before glue up. Any misfits or weird gaps need to be corrected now, or I'll be forced to live with them till the end of my days.
Little leg-shaped recesses will help to secure the tops to the carcass. That's why the legs poke out above the side stretchers. We'll dig out the shape so they nest right in. Like it or not, this wood will continue to bend and move around as the seasons change. Wish it didn't, but these are the cards we're dealt, so we have to make do. Screws will hold onto these panels better than just white chocolate syrup butter ever could. We're going to be doing something a little different for the drawers. I got a guy who's got a guy who deals in wood of the hard and exotic varieties. Oh, don't worry, it's all kosher. I mean, it's wenge. A really dark, really hard, what's that? Oh, okay. Um, apparently it's actually pronounced wenge. It's not too offensive all around. Just be sure you don't eat it or breathe it or look at it for too long. I'm hoping the subtle contrast between this and the lighter walnut will create some nice visual interest. I might need to get my eyes checked, but it's really hard to see any sort of scribed or penciled line on this dark wood. The end grain isn't too bad, but the rest is near impossible. The blue tape method takes a little longer to set up than just scribing, but there's zero question as to where your cut should be. My smallest chisel is too wide to fit between the tails. I knew this day would come. This wood is really old. And it came from a very far away place. I'm at least 80% certain it was a tree at some point. Maybe a barn. Who knows. And now it's going to spend some time as a couple of drawer bottoms.
I like this saw because it looks like a predatory fish. <laughs> We're going to make a drawer guide that will span the two upper rails. A drawer stop will come later, but I'm not going to say when. Alright, I keep getting hills in the middle of my work. What's the deal with that? Oh, it's because my trusted number eight was actually playing for Team Banana. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna lap this for a few hours. You guys go on without me. I got some extra wenge that's burning a hole in my pocket, and it's starting to get uncomfortable. We're gonna take that wenge and turn it into some wengeettes. Er, wedges. Wedges are all the rage these days. These will be driven through the rails we made a little bit ago. They'll give this whole thing just a kiss of structural rigidity. And maybe some internet brownie points. That was the last of the joinery. We're in the home stretch, but we're not out of the woods just yet. Nobody goes home until every edge is smooth, every surface is scraped, all corners are chamfered or sanded, and every other imperfection otherwise erased from this realm. You know, for phone chargers. Or maybe an air hole for a pet. Here it all is, just waiting to be reborn. Apologies for the fan, guys. It's like 100 degrees in here, and I'm sweating my ass off.
I was, admittedly, a little rusty for my first set of dovetails. But I'm going to take this opportunity to let you in on a little secret. Something a very wise person once told me a very long time ago. Just cheat. I've actually never done this before. In fact, I'm pretty sure this isn't such a great idea. It might have something to do with the fact that this is walnut sawdust. Ah, whatever. Okay, this one has got to work. Notice that. All this boiled linseed oil has gotten this wood a little excited. Hell, I'm a little excited. It's like the hairs on the backs of their necks are standing up. But instead of hair, it's moistened wood fibers. A light sanding in between coats should take things back down a notch. Maybe two, if you're lucky. After all that, I rub it back down with a few coats of oil wax mix. Now, I wasn't originally going to say anything about this. And honestly, I'm still kind of embarrassed to admit it. So we're going to head on over to the Cone of Silence, so nobody will be able to hear anything I'm about to tell you. Some friends gave us these lamps they didn't want anymore, and we needed something at least half as cool as them to put them on. So, I set out to design and build some tables that would play nice with this sort of thing. And this is them. What do you think? I still can't believe someone would throw this away. It already had the motion tracking dots on it and everything. Honestly though, I think it looks just fine the way it is. This has been fun. We really should do this more often. If you like these tables and want to try building them yourself, I have digital plans available on my website for purchase. In fact, they look just like this. Only non-corporeal, of course. Anyway, I appreciate you sticking around this long. Thanks for watching. Just one last thing. Whatever happened to that other guy? this.